Welcome to Snake Dad Barbell. My name is Big Lair. Time to train. And this is me in 2019 weighing 400 pounds. My coach Cole Robinson coached me down to a body weight of 219 pounds in just six short months. But I didn't stop there. Guess what I kept on doing? I kept on conditioning so I can keep on benching squatting and deadlifting in the world's greatest powerlifting federation the usapl now, i don't know about you guys but i want you guys to come along for the ride because it ain't stopping here i'm only getting stronger i'm only getting better i'm only getting more fit and it's time to train <laughs>what's up guys welcome to snake diet barbell time to train you all have heard me talk about my powerlifting coach John Allen Reese <clears throat> my powerlifting coach John Allen Reese is um, he has a podcast out of Norway he's uh, he's an American he's a he he's a marine uh, he's a retired marine he lives in Norway with uh, with his wife is, is from Norway so he lives there and he is my powerlifting coach and he's an amazing guy. All the information you, you, you need to know about his uh, social media, his programming, is down below in the, in the information uh, portion about this video. I'm posting it all here. I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy and paste it. He sent it to me on my, um, uh, in, in an email. So it's all there for you. So all you have to do is click to find him on all his social media platforms. He does... He's, he does... Uh, Powerlifting training, weightlifting training, bodybuilding training. He does. <clears throat> he coaches men and women, and uh, uh, and he's got a great philosophy on life. He's got uh, close to 30 years as a as a as a powerlifter, and he's got the credentials to prove it. Um, I'm going to post some pictures of him in action uh, as a powerlifter, so so you can see because seeing is believing. The guy is one of the best people on the planet. And, uh, and he's, he's coached me to all my success in powerlifting. So if you want a chance to meet a really great guy, hear some great music because he writes his own music. He produces his own music. He's a comedian in Norway. He, uh, and he and I have been in contact with each other for the last two years nonstop. I've never met the guy, but he's online coached me to, to, my, to my first actual competitive victory. And we just saw that meet, so I competed against somebody and, uh, and actually won first place in a powerlifting competition because of him. So we have a podcast that's immediately following me after I'm done here talking. Enjoy the podcast. It's a long one, but there's a lot of valuable information there. So while you clean your house or while you're doing whatever, plug it in. Listen to what we got to say because we're doing it for you guys because we're all about making better versions of ourselves, getting stronger, being connected to a deeper sense of purpose other than just looking good, even though that's wonderful <clears throat> to look good, but we are more interested in a deeper sense of purpose in life. And we are here to uh, promote each other's social medias and to make this world a better place. As trite as that may sound, we are really here to actually do that. So without further ado, here is the podcast video. God bless you. See you soon on Snake Diet Barbell. Time to train. I'm your host, Big Lair. Talk to you soon. Bye. I'm doing good. How are you doing, Coach? Man, things are great. Life is great. Uh, <laughs> is it not? Is it not? It is. It is. As my uncle says, any day above ground, you're doing all right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have really been looking forward to having this conversation with you. You and I have uh, not a very long history as friends, but it is a rather eventful history. Yeah, I would say. Um, Take us back to when you and I first came. In fact, take us back to before you and I came in contact with each other. What was going on in your life and what led up to us meeting? Well, I'll do a, I'll do a, a hyper, ultra fast forward to, uh, to 
what happened where big changes happened. I grew up uh, um, in a in a family. My mom was a, a teacher, dad was a doctor, and they did you know they were sober parents and and great parents. Did everything they I mean bent over backwards ten times in a row and and were honorable people. And I made mistakes as a young man. And and in 2014, at the age of 40, 44, I got my first DUI. And I was a heavy drinker at the time, and um, I woke up on Thanksgiving, which is it is a poignant day for this to happen, because uh, I had slept, I had slept it off, I I got drunker than hell the night before uh, after work, and uh, I ate big, I slept over at a, at a friend's house that I'd known for 27 years, so I could have stayed there. I I gave myself a little field sobriety test upon waking, ate some more food, and was like, yeah, I'm good. It's a blizzard out, 6 a.m., nobody's out. I know the route. And so I drove around, you know, as fast as you can in a blizzard without trying to hurry. And uh, and something made a police officer two miles away from my house pull me over, and, and I blew over the limit. Um, to, you know, I blew, the limit that I blew over said that there's no getting out of it. You got your, drunk, your first drunk driving. But it was a limit. I'm doing 15 miles an hour, and there's nobody on the road. So even if I ran into a street sign, uh, nobody was going to get hurt. So, but the, here's the thing about life: you never know. So, um, right. so I can't. You know, I would be arrogant to say, "Yeah, I was totally fine," and and that's part of taking responsibility. So, um, because my folks taught me to take responsibility, I you know, I just I got the DUI, said as little as I could, and, and went to court and took my charges and. Got off it and and got off of, um, probation in, in the in three days under the the time that you know because I wasn't going to try to skip out on and and get over you know like drug testing and and uh, uh, alcohol testing because I know they want to trap you in the system. Now the thing about this DUI was that it it took my drinking away, it took my lifestyle away, and I had to start reassessing things. And I said, well, what the hell am I going to do with my time? I can't drink anymore. And I thought how ridiculous that was. And I said, why don't you get your ass out and start uh, walking again like you used to and, and try to get back into your six-mile uh, route that you used to walk. Because I used to like to speed walk uh, when I was in my, in my 20s. That was how I kept myself in shape. Me and my buddy, uh, we used to have a, a, a thing between us where if he said drop down and give me 100 push-ups, I, I had to give him 100 push-ups. And it didn't matter what was going on, if I was at a family gathering or if I was whatever, it was, that was our little thing. So, so I'd like to get back to that sort of shape. So um, I started walking and I walked by a gym and went in and saw a guy doing deadlifts. And this guy, uh, he had been a competitive power lifter, I think in the UPA for uh, about eight, nine years and, uh, and had credentials and, and he said, yeah, I can show you, but, you know, since I'm a personal trainer here, I'd have to, you know, sell you some, sell you some time. And I thought, well, I got nothing better to do than to get in shape. And uh, my folks were willing to, um, since I admitted that I was completely in the wrong, they said, well, you can quit working as a chef and we'll put you back in school and help you out that way. Um, but, you know, the stipulation is, is that you graduate and you don't work as a chef and you just... You just suffer through not having any money and and you just get your life back together. And you know, I agreed with that because hell, they you know, the system and, and the system had me over a barrel, I had me over a barrel. So it was time to you know to, to get the uh, to get my poop in a group, right? So the guy um, was it came like squats were I'd always feared squats because I didn't have the greatest knees and I thought, well, I'm gonna destroy my knees. But I might as well man up and try to learn how to do these squats. Anybody should know how to squat. That's what I'm thinking. You should be able to squat. So, okay. Then bench press was a scary thing because it was an ego thing. Like, I'm not benching anything, right? <laughs> like, what am I benching at, you know, 400 pounds without having done a push-up in over 22 years? I'm not benching jack nothing. So everybody's watching me with these punk-ass weights on the, on the barbell. And I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. But the deadlift... He um, he tested me on my uh, on my sumo deadlift. That was my first test, and I and I uh, sumoed I think like three seventy five, and I remember 
not really being impressed with the movement as much until he put that number on there where it was like a gut check. And when I felt that deadlift open up and I locked it out, something went off in my brain and I said, I've got to do this. This is, I, I, I love this. And, uh, and I've been, I got bit. That was just sunk it, sunk them fangs in double hard and held me there. So, so you, you, you come into a situation where you become uh, aware of the necessity of a change mm -hmm. from the lifestyle that you had. Oh, yeah. You fell into powerlifting. Now, mm -hmm. what was, of course, you had, you had another issue behind, besides the alcoholism at that time, and that issue was your body weight. My body weight was, I was 475 pounds when, I was 478, actually. That was what, that's what he, yeah. Let's just, let me just interrupt you and just jump ahead and tell people, okay, you went from four, what did you say, 478? 478. And then you went through a process with uh, a little bit of assistance from me and another gentleman. We'll get to that in a mm -hmm. minute. But that process took you down to a total weight loss of how many pounds? Tell people. Uh, well, the... Total weight loss of 166 um, pounds? 166 pounds. 166 pounds. In, now, in how long did it take you to do that? Six months. Six months. Six months. That's that's more than and, and that's more than David Goggins lost. So yeah, about that. In the same time period. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah. There's a lot of people that can say that. Right. <laughs> so, so, so that right there should tell people there's more than enough of a reason for them to listen to this conversation right here. You are someone who went from uh, uh, 400 and some odd pounds all the way down to 166 pounds. And that right there, uh, once people hear the process that you, uh, the path that you walked, the journey that it was for you, uh, I think you can motivate not just a handful of people. I think you can motivate quite a few people. I'm thinking, so, well, I, if I could, I, I'm going to not interrupt, but I have to interject this. That it was 478 pounds when I started powerlifting, and and the interesting thing, which which really uh, put the nail in the coffin, not just the joy of of, uh, of feeling myself get strong and moving a barbell, uh, you know, it was that the guy wrote a new wrote a nutritional protocol for me that I have. I wish I could find the belt. Um, I I chopped off. I have to go this way. I chopped off like this much on my belt with in the in the same year. I almost lost the same amount of weight in say eight months under this guy's training that I did uh, with the other gentleman we're going to talk about. So what I did was I. Oh, I'm sorry. I lost. I lost. Um, I, one inch on a belt is about ten pounds of fat loss. So, so I put 10 of those increments, one inch increments on this belt through the powerlifting training. That's eating, uh, and that was eating four to five small meals a day. That wasn't, now, now, yeah. When, when was it that you and I met? Let's see, it was 2020. 2000, 2017. Almost 2018. That's right. My mom had a stroke, and, um, and I was on Facebook at the time investigating all these uh, aspects of powerlifting. I was just soaking it up, and then I came across your, your page on Facebook, and we started talking, and, uh, and, you, and you told me you're... For quite a while. Yeah. For quite a while before we ended up in this little cooperation. Right, right. Giving you a little bit of guidance with your nutrition, with your powerlifting. Right. You, I, let's just, let's just... Yeah, go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, you, I think you, you wrote me my first program in the year 2018. Yep, and that and that took me. Yeah. Yep, and that took me into a mock meet, and that took me into a mock meet, and then, and then, uh, and then you said, and you said, let's get you ready for a meet now. And and uh, that's right. You were you were watching that meet uh, on uh, on 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 Instagram, right? Yes, I was. Yep. 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 Yeah, and and in that I was three hundred and seventy eight pounds. Yeah, you were still heavy then. Yes, I was 378, yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, what I find, so let, let me just get this out. I don't know of anybody who has had 
a longer journey, a more intense journey of not only weight loss, but total attitude adjustment when it comes to life, when it comes to fitness. I don't know of anyone who's had a more intense journey than you have. You hmm. motivate the living daylights out of me. I, I, <laughs> I mean, good Lord, 166 pounds. A lot of people would have given up at the first five pounds. Because oh, it was too slow or because man. Too difficult or because of this, that, and the other. And you stuck it out. I almost, I almost died. And I didn't care if I died or not. I really didn't care. Um, I, I did, in my last month of reach, trying to reach my goal of being uh, 190 pounds, I went for broke. And, uh, and it was probably a little bit reckless of me to do dry fasting at high noon uh, while walking a golf course, while drinking no water. Swinging a golf golf club, no hat on, just just getting the last little bit out of this um, dry fast before I had to start powerlifting training again because I knew, yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let me let me touch on that a little bit because it's one thing to stay focused with your training, with your powerlifting. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. That, that that demands a certain amount of mental fortitude and focus. But you did something that a lot of people, you know, you and I think this is a, a day to day thing to fast, mm -hmm. but a lot of people would look at that as something as extreme or, yeah. or alternative, yeah. but for us it's just a normal lifestyle to fast. Now, mm -hmm. I don't want this episode to be all about fasting, but that is an integral part um, of, of the results, yeah. of, of the journey that you've been on. You started fasting, and I'm talking about not intermittent fasting, no. I'm not talking about water fasting or juice fasting, you did dry fasting. Dry fasting. I do it too, but you did it in a little bit more long term type of thing. I talk about dry fasting for X number of days, not hours. Yeah. I did I did three I did a I did a four day saltwater fast and then did a and then went right into a dry fast without doing a refeed for three days. And then did another uh four day um snake juice fast after that and that dropped me fifty five pounds. Of which I, which I assume 25 was, um, was body fat. The other was water because it took about 25 to 30 pounds of water to rehydrate after. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just let people know who aren't familiar with the snake diet. Snake juice is not juice. It's a salt. It's a mixture of salt waters. Um, mm -hmm. um, maybe Larry, you can tag that or, or, you know, I don't know. You're a little bit younger than me, so you know that hashtag stuff. Put a, well, some information on it so people know yeah. what juice is. But what it was was, um, combination of salts in the water which enables you to fast a little bit longer mm -hmm. i personally have a um, personal record if i can put it that way of 86 hours nice of dry fasting nice uh and then immediately after those 86 hours <laughs> i went into a 72 hour so-called snake juice fast with the salt water yeah so 84 plus 72 do the math that's a lot of fasting and and what and mm -hmm. that entire period i was still getting my powerlifting training in. Right. So it is a myth. It is a myth when people say you can't do this, that, or the other when it comes to physical exertion while you're fasting. Oh my God. What what have people what have what have people gone through uh, at a time of war or under a dictatorship yeah. or in a concentration yeah. camp, you know, um, yeah. they've they have they have got this is Disneyland. And nobody's gonna die in this country because everywhere you look there's food you're gonna you know your will is gonna send you to to the gas station to get something on the way to the Arby's you're not gonna you know what I mean like you know you're gonna take care of it it's it's that uh, a motivational speaker said you know it change real change comes through extreme situations you're, you're not gonna lukewarm anything and um, and the the fasting thing is that when your ketones kick in, when you start making ketones to, to for your energy, because ketones and it kills appetite. So the first the first two days of, of a fast are the toughest because you've got the hunger pains. But then after that, I found I woke up and it was like getting something off my chest. That hunger just was gone, and and I could. And it was strange to not eat. Well, everybody. I joke with my wife. I joke with my wife, and I, I tell her, "Well, you're about to get your uh, Mandinka warrior back." Nah. Yeah. When, I, <laughs> when, I, when I'm about 
Yeah, for me now it's about 36 hours. In okay. Fast. I oh, okay. feel this em- enormous kick of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's when I train the best, actually. 36 hours into a fast? Mm. Good. God, okay, I'm okay. Go. I'm ready to go. Bro. So, so, mm-hmm. so this whole thing about... Um, this whole thing about not being able to exert yourself uh, when you're fasting, it, it, it's a myth. Um, yeah, it is. It is. But, you know, the people have to realize it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's, you know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a stream of consciousness that, 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 you know, without getting too cryptic or philosophical about it, there's, when you want something, you're going to do it. Sure. The end. You want it bad enough. You want it bad enough, you're going to do it. Because there's a lot of pretend ones. Yeah. I wish. Absolutely. I would like to. I wish. I wish. Even if, even if people say, I want to, I don't even want to hear that. I want to hear, what are you doing? Right. Right. The, I'm going to, but I am. The, the power lifters, the power lifters at, at uh, my first powerlifting gym, which is the Royal Oak gym, which is the one that, that, you've, that I did my mock meet at, there was a guy there who, um, who used to spot me, but he would only spot me if, if I told him, uh, he would say, you're going to get this? You know, you're going to get this, this squat? You know, it would be some heavy squat, and I'd be like, at the beginning, I would say, I would say, yeah, I think I'm going to, he'd go, he'd go, are you going to do it or not? I say, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And he go, okay, now I'll spot you. He goes, he goes, don't waste my time. I'm not gonna give you a spot if you're not gonna do it. And I never missed, uh, I never missed a squat because you, there's something about speaking it that that makes it happen. Yeah, there's this process. It's called neurolinguistic programming. Ah, nice. Uh, if, yeah, if you say it, it's gonna be, it's gonna get uh, linked up in your brain, and it's gonna become mm-hmm. a reality that you can manifest. Right, right, um, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, <clears throat> alcoholism. Yeah. To stopping with that, to yep. power lifting, to fasting, mm-hmm. and then you and I started. Um, wow, we're going on two and a half years now. That's right. Of a cooperation where I'm doing yep. your programming. Yep. And these are. And I tell you, you challenge me because I do. Look what you got there. These are all your programs here. One, oh, two, three. Good. So I get a I get a new notebook every time. Yeah, yeah, and this is my uh, and this is my this is my last one here, and this is the this is the medal that you helped me get through your programming, because I finally I finally beat another lifter in the USAPL. <laughs> It's there's food, sweat, blood, everything on this thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it uh, it smells it smells Jimmy too. <laughs> but let me but let me give you another accolade. These these AAPF um, records are are actually part of your programming too. That's right. That was your first. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. There you go. So that's a uh, yeah classic raw, classic raw world record holder in uh, squat bench and deadlift. So you know I'm building up uh, I'm building up a, a credential here, and and I need people to understand that too, man. That I, when I first started powerlifting, the first physique that I saw that I wanted to have for myself was that of Dan Green. Hmm. Just a fat level like fat. A layer of fat on him like that, right? Just rail, just paper thin, and just looks like a looks like an action figure. And I thought I was going to get that in six, seven months. But then there's realities uh, that let you know you got to you got to train for about fifteen years and um, and and uh, go go hard if yeah, you know. But having said that, but having said that, <laughs> yeah, you yes. have come. I, and I, I say this all the time, and I mean it. You have come when you look at your total journey from the weight loss to the to the Lifestyle changes to the results of your power. You come further than even someone like Dan Green could ever. You know, you don't have Dan Green's records. You don't have his strength or his physique. But your journey from start to where you are now is incredible. I don't know anybody who can match that. I just don't. I, you know, I thank you, thank you, man. And I'm and and I want to uh, and I want to turn that. I think with my with my progress at at college and the College of Education right now. Um, I have enough, I have enough credits to, to already graduate with a degree in English literature. And I'm thinking that 
you know, I've always been a guy who who who's a lone wolf in in my um, in my invention of myself. And you know, when I go at something, I go all in, and and I really don't appreciate too much out outside interference with that. And I think I might be picking the wrong profession because a professor of mine back in the day said said, hey, man, if this is not, if, you know, you're going to know whether or not this is for you or not. And there's a lot of teachers who, who's, who spend 15 years in the classroom hating every living second of it. And, um, and, you know, with everything that's happened in the last five or six years, I think what I've been doing is building up a, uh, a credential for myself to market myself as to, say, people who are, who are just broken in life, and to yeah. guys who are approaching their 40s who need to really get in shape and who need I'm um, 47. 47 yep and uh and I'm 100% natural and I know you know people who say that they're always suspect but you know whatever but um but you know I know that uh playing with with exogenous hormones is a serious serious game and it's nothing to play around with so I don't do that um I said this on a previous podcast. Uh, I, I never will judge anyone mm. who decides to go that route and, and Me either. take in extra hormones Me either. Or, or testosterone or whatever. If it's for them, then it's for them. Right. Uh, however, I stay away from it. There's two reasons. One, mm -hmm. I lived in the USAPL uh, mm -hmm. slash IPF. Mm -hmm. I lived in the Norwegian Powerlifting Federation mm -hmm. as well, which is also under the IPF. Mm -hmm. And in the IPF, you can't. You can't use you can't use anything. Mm -hmm. uh, there's testing. You got to stay clean. That's one reason. But another reason is I'm scared to death of the, the potential side effects. Yeah, it scares the living daylights out of me. Yeah, I've seen. You know, some people can say, "Oh, it's so few people who are going to get in that situation where they're actually adversely affected mm -hmm. by side effects." Okay, maybe. But I've seen with my own two eyes with people that I know. I've seen the effects. I know two people just off the top of my head who died from complications directly related to their steroids mm, and mm. hormone manipulation. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, your endocrine system protects. Pr your endocrine system runs everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And 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 it's a scary. yeah. It's 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 no joke. And um. Yeah, it's scary. It's too scary for me to try to. Oh, that. it's a nightmare. It's it, it, it's a it's a nightmare waiting to happen that that you will just have not every every single day will be just a uh, if you don't do it right and if you and if you're not one of the lucky lucky ones and if you don't have the money for the medical care to to reverse anything and if you I mean there's so many factors that go into having everything go right that that the 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 chances are slim I'm sitting back and I'm watching all these great power lifters and and I'm. In the back of my head, I'm going, if, you know, God willing keeps me around until 2050, who's going to be here? What are they going to look like? You know, I watch, I watch yeah. some guys on, uh, on YouTube um, who were bodybuilders, and there's a couple big names out there that I look at them now as they do their podcast, and they, and they look like, at the age of 55, they look like uh, frail old men. They have none of their gains. Yeah. They, yeah. you know, now there's, there's another guy out there. Um, who, um, who used to sell duck eggs and I think, you know, anybody, <laughs> he, and, and he's, you know, it's my assumption he stays on, but he's still a human being. It's still, it's still, it's still, um, it's still flesh and blood, man. And I think the guys who, who maintain their muscle, um, and who are, you know, who aren't going as hard as they used to are the guys who, who power lift because the, uh. The powerlifting makes it possible for the muscle pump to yeah. to get you bigger. But if you're not pushing that muscle hard, then a pump is pretty much a, a come and go thing. You know, you need that hard muscle base. Yeah. Well, talking about uh, talking about pump and pushing the muscles and whatnot. Okay, you you call me coach. I call you coach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you mm -hmm. want, you'll design a program that will, that will be based in strength, that will be based in solid fundamentals, that will get you results if you do your part. And no, you can't cut corners on your program because your program will bring out will bring out if you're if you're staying if you're doing your due diligence from sleep to food to stress to everything. Um, and and if you do your part with with uh, with Coach John Allen Reese's uh, programming, you are you you're gonna exceed your own expectations and his because um, I remember the first program that that I got from you. I squat benched and deadlift once a week. And to me, I'd never done that before, and I was a little uh, apprehensive about, you know, um, whether I whether I'd just be able to to gut check it through or not. But I had been training for a while, and it was a great change, and it got and that alone got me in greater physical condition than just squatting once a week, benching once a week, All right? And and so all the variations, uh, you, your programming is just really spot on. You have a ton of experience you bring into every. How many how many decades have you been lifting and you put all of that into the programming exactly. and it's nuanced. You can't just write a program. And we and you have never met. We've never shared the same space. You're not there with me hardly ever on my programming, but what is but I upload everything and you see it. Yeah. So I do video right. and uh, we have a pretty pretty uh, regular contact. That's right. That's right. And let me add to this. My buddy, um, I have a friend who lives out in Vegas now. Um, the first real strong friend of mine, first real strong person I ever saw, I, I, I spotted him at school, at the school gym. Didn't know him from a hole in the wall. But I knew, because I had been powerlifting for about a year, that he was a strong dude because he was doing uh, standing, um, uh, standing, delt, uh, standing delt raises with 120-pound dumbbells. And I was like, okay, that dude's strong. And he asked me for a spot on the bench. And this was the first time I'd seen anybody bench anything over 405. And, uh, and I'd never seen what was, like, to me, just supposed to be on your back, go on a bench. And then go to, like, like some crazy number after that, like four. What I had to say it was, like, I think, he, I think he benched 440 that day. And I've never seen anybody... Just take 405 off with without a spot and just smash it like like that. And I was like, whoa, yeah. I was like, whoa! It's like uh, it was like a um, yeah. it was like a uh, who's who's the wrestler? Um, macho Man moment. I was like, whoa! So and and so we came up with a friendship. Now this guy was getting programming from these online guys who were related to all these big names, right? Yeah. And he was getting credentialed online programming. That sucked. And he was bitching left and right because we were workout partners after that. And, uh, and he would be looking on his phone on the way to the gym and looking at the program that, the, that these online uh, power lifters were selling him. And he's going, this doesn't match any, any of the, what I'm expecting. And, and like, he's wrong about yeah. these set of numbers. He's it's just wrong, 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 wrong. Because you have to be able to have, when I'm, when I'm getting from online coaching is that you first have to you have to have the experience but you have to be able to know how to teach and you have to be able to watch and pay attention and catch all those things and constant constant feedback I think is what made makes our relationship successful because yeah because you film you film every single training session every, every rep. that's right that's right from time to time, not all of the supplemental exercises. Right. Every time you squat, bench, or deadlift, or any variation of squat, bench, or deadlift, That's you right. film it, you send it to me, That's it. I give you your feedback. And I, and I do a voiceover. And you do a voiceover, right. exactly. So, um, right. People can check that out at your YouTube channel. Right. Tell people now what you're uh, working to find you on YouTube. Uh, my the name of my channel I changed it because I'm because I'm staying close to the Snake Diet name, but. Um, I changed my YouTube channel to Snake Diet Barbell Time to Train. Okay. Like, you know, they have gyms out here, Detroit Barbell, this, that, Barbell, 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 Barbell. So I'll kind of jump on that train a little bit because it keeps me close to Snake Diet on YouTube and it keeps me close to powerlifting on YouTube. Because... Now, 
for those who, yeah. for those who don't know, the snake diet is a, um, is a fasting-focused lifestyle. It was uh, started by a gentleman by the name of Cole Robinson. Cole Robinson, do you have a guy? Check him out. Fucking maniac. Uh, I love him or I hate him. <laughs> yeah. I, get I love him. Yeah. I love him, man. I've, uh, I've chatted with him a couple of times on uh, social media, on Messenger and, and whatnot. Uh, just a real down-to-earth guy. Oh. When I say down-to-earth, yeah. I'm not saying he's like your, uh, he's, he's not like your, uh, yeah, down to earth. He's straightforward, I guess. He is straightforward. relentless in his yeah. uh, transparency. He he does not care about your feelings. Does not care about anyone's feelings. He has he he is consciously operating without a filter because that's what people need. No filters. It's a it's a it's a it's it's not it's not just an act to get people to watch him on YouTube. He really is just uh, f the world. Unless, unless you're gonna be 100% real, and and yeah. as he's he's the guy who I was thinking today as I was cleaning up around here, there would be really no better training partner than Cole because I went and saw him in Canada. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. What's up? What you got? I, I got one of them. Anyway, uh, yeah, I like so <laughs> so I yeah. I was trying to fix my yeah. So uh, so you know when I went to go see him in Canada, I only got to spend. Um, Maybe about two hours with him because he's so regimented in his in his uh, in his lifestyle. He even even I, his greatest uh, snake diet dieter, he only allowed two two and a half hours for us because he wasn't going to miss his sleep. He you wasn't heard about his schedule. He's got his schedule. It's written in stone. Oh he's man, gonna get sleep, he, he's going to get his sleep. He he oh yeah yeah I mean uh, I was I was almost a little upset with him because uh, because I had to catch a flight back and and if I had flown all the way out there and spent you know close to thirty seven hundred bucks you know now part of the reason why is because I went out there to play a golf course and I'm an avid golfer and there's a mountain golf course that I went out and played which was pff, wow but um but you know I met Sasha. Cecilia, who has a who has a, a YouTube channel, she was his greatest female snake diet uh, success story, and she lives in the same city. They work out at the same gym, so I met her, did a video with her, and then I met Cole, did a video with Cole, and uh, working out with him was man, he'd be such a great workout partner. He's 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 not a loud guy. He's just he's a great motivator in the gym. He's a great motivator on you know in life, and and the guy really he saved he saved my life, man. He really did. It, it took me 46 years for him to finally crack my skull open yeah. and say, hey, all you got to do is stop eating, drink salt water, yeah. and when you can't handle it anymore, you do a refeed and go right back in and do it again. And within the first week, I was, whew. You know what I think is really cool and interesting and, and myth-shattering about mm -hmm. Your powerlifting um, and the results that you've gotten from using my programming is that you're in your late 40s mm. uh, and you're still making gains. Oh yeah, and my testosterone is down 100 points. Say again? And my testosterone level is down 100 points. I just got a blood test. Okay. Yeah, I've got the like my I got this is my first um, blood panel result from my first doctor. Uh, and that was in that was like a year and a half ago, and my test level was 631. I just got my test level uh, checked again about two months ago by 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 an internal medicine doctor, and my test was 519. And I'm making more gains than I ever have under your programming because of one thing, and and I honestly believe it's. Um, that now I've returned. I've turned my supplemental exercises way up, and yeah. and the uh, about that, yeah. yeah. But I but I don't believe I I don't believe I I it would have been a smart move for me to turn it up until just now because I needed my body to be conditioned and honed and banged yeah. hard by your programming. Right, right. It's it's there's a, there's there's a time there's a time and, and place for everything, and. You know, for a while I was doing the supplemental act like if I was doing a, uh, a, a dumbbell press, seated dumbbell press. Before this programming, 
and three programs ago, the weight on the, the, the weight of the barbell was say 35, 40 pounds. Yeah. What's that? Now it's 65, 70, and and I can like my muscles now twitch at night, right? Yeah. Right. Or now I'm using the hundred and hundred and ten pound dumbbells to do dumbbell presses where it was only fifty five sixty. Because what men need to understand is if you're not taking exogenous hormones, you have got to treat your body very, very carefully. And you can't push it until it's until it's time. No, you gotta be nice and get your rested. Yeah, and even even now, yeah, you gotta make the decisions when you're in the gym. A lot of people will get a program and they'll think, well, I gotta do what's on the paper. No, you don't. You gotta stay safe. I think it's noteworthy that not only in your late are you in your late forties and still making gains, but you're also hundred and sixty some odd pounds lighter than you were when you started powerlifting. Yeah. And you're actually a better and stronger power lifter. Oh yeah. Oh and that and, and here's the other thing, right? And and there's this is what time bridges the gap. Okay? So when I was five hundred pounds, my my squat uh I, I squatted four 70 to a to a uh, west side barbell height okay and it was a shit squat okay <laughs> no that's okay that's all right man you know none of them are watching my channel who's are they supporting me they're not putting food on my table and and these guys will admit it you know they're they're a special little group but they have yeah. tremendous things to offer but uh just kind of poking fun at them the the guy who was training me, he he was happy that I had the gut check to get under the barbell, take it off, and hit it. That's why he was patting me on the back because up until then, I really was scared of squatting, and for him to 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 get me to think I had hit a depth squat with 475, he wasn't gonna take that moment away from me. The guy really, and he told me, he, the guy told me at the time, and I thought he was full of, full of uh, you know what, and I thought he was just taking my money, and, and, um, and since then I've gone back and thanked him for, for, for his experience, because it was like the minnow trying to tell the blue whale what's, what the deal is. And he said, um, I said, you know, I wanna, I wanna get lean and ripped, and get stronger at the same time. And he says, okay, well, you gotta decide what you're gonna do because this is powerlifting and you can't do both. It's not possible. You need to pick a body weight to train at and stay there. I would, yeah, now, I disagree with that. well, I disagree, I disagree with it to, to a point as well. And this is where I think he fell short in his teaching ability because, but we hardly knew each other and we didn't talk like you and I, and I didn't have the experience, but what I've learned there's truth in what he says, and there's not truth. Time is the is the is the is the gap closure because when I lose a bunch of weight over 20 pounds, my lips go down because I don't have the substrate in the blood. I don't my leverage has changed, and your body gets confused and doesn't know how to move after you lose a certain amount of weight. You know, like there's a window for me at least that I found that if I once I start dropping say 20 pounds to 25 pounds I start feeling it in my lips I start feeling the absence of the yeah. carbohydrates and the fat and and the yeah, power yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I understand that but um, the, the, the deciding factor in that strength loss whether you, whether you lose strength or how much strength you lose or how quickly you lose strength is how quickly you lose the weight the yeah you lose that weight right Yep. But if you stabilize that weight, right. stabilize it or slow it down to where you're right. dropping that weight but you're doing it slowly, there's nothing that says that you have to get weaker. No, that's true. That's true. And and I'm and I'm realizing, you know, this is this is a, an important thing that you're finally banging into my hard skull yeah. is that you gotta pick yeah, a weight and stabilize there. Yeah, again, you're hundred and sixty some odd pounds lighter, but you're a better power lifter than you were when you were almost five hundred pounds. And, and in a perfect in a perfect world, um, here's 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 how it would here's how I could truly really with one hundred percent confidence say 
I don't know what I just, maybe I'm going to figure out how to say it, but uh, I can't really put it perfectly yet. But I lost, um, from I went from 500 pounds, let's just round it out. I went from being 500 pounds to a 290 pound lifter, which is, who is twice as strong. But it took me three years of experimenting and going on my own and being hard-headed, but also taking yeah. advice. And, but the one thing that never, ever stopped was that I kept training. I never missed a day. I never miss, I never miss a day. I don't play games with that. I, I, I don't miss a day. You know, you got it. You got to follow your program, and you got to get in there, and you got to train. You don't get to skip as a power lifter. You don't. It screws everything up. You have to be. You have to be married to that program, and nothing, yeah. nothing, unless short of a, a a tragedy or, or you're just sick, or you're just completely utterly drained. You get your butt to that gym, and you try out those numbers for the day. That's it. No negotiation. And and anybody who's not willing to do that, you don't. You, you you're not ready. For the powerlifting program, you're not ready for that lifestyle. I would say that now, there's a lot of people out there who work out, mm -hmm. um, and they don't really have a goal. They don't really have a meaning. They don't have a motivation for their training other than, yeah, maybe they just want to get in shape in yeah. general. And, 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 and there's that verbalization and reality and reality and and um, what do you call that? You know, I'm thinking in Norwegian, but what is it in English? <laughs> there's an ideology and there's a reality. And there's a... Exactly. But I think what I'm trying to say is if you consolidate your thoughts and you have a purpose and you have a solid goal, you have a definable goal. Right. In your case, a written goal. It's right. It's a program that, that, that you get in, in anywhere from 8-week blocks to 10, 12, 14-week blocks. Right. If you have a program. In that program, it says what you're supposed to do. I would think that looking at that program from week to week, there's your motivation. There's right. your solid, concrete goal. This week, I'm supposed to squat X number right. of pounds for X number of reps. Right. How, how, how much of a motivator is the programming? It's, um, it's, contra, it's contra, super. Contra not having... As opposed to not having... Oh, you never, you, you never, you, if you want big things, you never go at a bro style. That only works a little while. You have to have a solid yeah. goal. And your numbers keep people within within their capabilities well within them. And, and they progress with numbers that, when I look at your programming, I look at the first, the first week and the last week. And... And I see we're myself in the gym. Yeah, I see. I, I visualize where I'm going to be, and I say, "Yeah, those numbers are absolutely doable. It's going to be a challenge, but absolutely." And uh, and and I don't go. He's he's insane. Why is he having me do? This? I've never said that once. You know, every everything from A to Z makes sense in your programming. It makes solid sense because you've been there, you've done that, and you are a very uh, analytical, nuanced coach. So you have. You have the you have the you have the anal you, you like you can look at something and your expert eyes will will be able to make those changes on them or suggest or, or dig into the lifter's conscious mind and go what were you thinking about doing that why would you do that maybe try this or maybe give me some feedback on that it's not like you're saying it's my way or the highway you know coaches who do that are never never last because you because you're just so unbendable that why would I want to deal with you if 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 I tell you something that's seriously on my heart, where I'm risking my safety, you know, because this is, as you well know, powerlifting can tear your yeah. tear you up, and so you don't go yeah, at this stuff half-assed, right? And so. But I try to approach it. I try to approach it like this. You know, I I, I need to know the person that I'm programming for. Yeah. And, and that's that's not like I'm not talking like a year, several year long relationship with them or friendship mm. with them. I'm talking about, I have to know why are they powerlifting or why are they training? Yeah. What do they want to get out of it? And what are their capabilities? What, in other words, what have they done before? What level are they? Right. What level are they? Where are you at in your and, life? And then, and then the whole thing would fall apart if there wasn't good communication. That's right. Play. That's right. You and I have that. You know, we, we, uh, That's it. We, we talk on the telephone. We talk on Messenger. You send me your videos every week. Um, right? mm -hmm. After every training session, mm -hmm. you send me your videos. Mm -hmm. And um, with that kind of communication, 
then I can apply the knowledge I have to that individual listener. Just like I've just like I've done people, the whole thing would fall apart without that communication. And to add to that, because I agree one hundred percent. When I was dabbling in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, yeah. and I and I left that because I just didn't want to risk injuring myself because I I, I like powerlifting more. Um, when I was I was beginning another YouTube research phase on on Jiu Jitsu, and one of the uh, one of the one of the original practitioners from the Gracie family, he talked about staying connected. And he this this. Um, this jiu-jitsu master went to Japan to see how his father's work, because it was, I forget which Grace, the, the original Gracie grandfather int introduced Brazilian jiu-jitsu to Japanese uh, judo. And Japan had never um, experienced jiu-jitsu in its perfected form. And so they ate it up with a spoon, but the grandfather... Gracie went to Japan and introduced it. Now, four generations later, his grandson comes back to Japan to see what has happened to the jiu-jitsu to make sure the standard is being met. And he wants to meet all these all these all these uh, different levels of jiu-jitsu practitioners from Japan. So yeah. he asked what he asked one of the practitioners, a random guy in the in the in the or, you know a random a random jiu-jitsu practitioner. It was like just a big dojo, and he picked a guy out, and he and he grabbed him by the the gi, and he said, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna push you, and pull you, but don't let me." And so he's pushing and pulling on the guy, and the and the guy's making all these mistakes, and he tells him to sit down, and he says, "The reason why I asked him that is because he's not staying connected." He says. You, you, as a jujitsu practitioner, you have to stay connected to the person. You don't have to do anything. The your connection, your physical connection, should after after disciplined practice tell you what you need to do to go on the offensive. The first thing they teach you to do is to be defensive and enjoy losing. You have to enjoy someone. Making making you their rag doll, you have to enjoy it. You cannot get upset because the person who can do one move, who, the person who's done one move a million times, is much more dangerous than the person who practices a million moves a million times. And the only way, yeah. and the only way you understand jujitsu is to stay connected to the person. So if a person is not connected to their life, if they're not quiet. And if they're distracted, and if they don't have a connection to a greater sense of purpose, like being physically fit, like I've given up on trying to be lean and ripped and sex. I'm sexy enough, man. What I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do is stay connected to my life. And like you're saying, that's that 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 factor that really helps training is when the person who's asking for the training is doing it for the right reasons. Why are you training? Are you training just so you can squat and bench, deadlift a certain number? Because once you get there, then what? Are you just going to give up and just go on to something else and throw everything away that you work for? Or are you going to take that and is it going to help you transcend into something else? You know, um, yeah. my, when I saw my mom in the in the middle of the uh, woken up in the middle of the night and my mom was on the floor of her bathroom. Uh, in her nightgown have, after having a stroke, and I know it's graphic for some people to hear these things. I won't go into any more graphic because it, it was more graphic than that. Because she was in the middle of the night using the restroom, she had had a stroke, and me and my dad are sitting there like a couple of doofuses. And I'm like, "You gotta call an ambulance." She's had a stroke, and when they pulled her away in the in the ambulance, um, it hit me. I said, "You can't be, you you can't be 378 pounds and do this anymore." Being strong is not that enough. Was your awakening right there. It's not. It's not enough. And uh, yeah. and then I started training. I started. I started sprinting. I started. I, then I learned. Then I started doing the research that on YouTube that got me to Cole Robinson. And I would be, yeah. and I would be uh, wrong to not mention who actually got me to Cole Robinson. And it was a guy named the Vegetable Police on YouTube. 
was a little itty bitty guy, little 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 twiggy guy, but who since then has since in the last couple of years has gotten into calisthenics and and as uh, he's the vet is called the Vegetable Police. That's the name of the channel. He's a guy named he's a guy named Casey from Canada who uh, had ulcerative colitis, who had Crohn's to the to the maximum degree, and, and the physicians told him you better get ready to die. And he said, No, 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 no. Uh, well, I can't. I have to go on my own and figure it out because no one else is is going to help me. And and uh, he read a book about fruitarianism, and he found that watermelon started healing his his uh, that watermelon juicing started healing his ulcerative colitis. And then he put it together. Well, maybe fruits the deal. So he left from Canada and moved to Thailand, and just for the fruit. And he was a vegan, right? And so he was doing a fruitarian diet. He was eating all these vegetables left and right, and, and what he found was that uh, the vegetables started to bring his ulcerative colitis back, and so now he's screwed, right? So then he went to carnivore, and the vegan world went bonkers. But he told people, he said, look, man, I'm not here to please you. I'm here because I'm connected to my, to my, to my heart beating, man. I don't want to die. You know, I'm not, I don't care if any of you vegans uh, say do whatever you're going to do because the carnivore diet turned him around. Yeah. And he was the greatest advocate of the, of the vegan, like his, in, one of his intro songs is, and to his, he's kind of a weird guy too. One of his intro songs to his, uh, to his channel is, I am a vegan, you are a loser. And so he's kind of a weird guy, right? But, um, yeah, yeah. but. This is the, the, the connection aspect. He wasn't doing it for vanity. He was doing it to yeah. save his neck. And he was doing it for, for a better quality of life. If you want a power lift, then, then just do it because you, you love the sport. But if you want a power lift for vain reasons, then I, I, would, the I would suggest doing the bodybuilding. Because you can, you can bodybuild and get in shape, or you can calisthenic and get in shape, but powerlifting has its own yeah. set of demands. trying to impress anybody. You know, people may be impressed with my lips, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to beat myself. Right. I want to beat, I want to beat the John Allen that was at the competition right. last time. Right. I want right. to squat um, coming up on August 22nd. I want to squat something over 500 in knee sleeves, not knee wraps. Because I squatted 534 in knee wraps that were on, not, not nearly as tight as they could have been without a belt. So, Squat is my favorite lift, especially now with all these shoulder issues. And <sighs> seven, eight shoulder operations, I can just forget about it on the big bench. My last meet, I, I benched uh, 25 kilos. <laughs> I had to put things in. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this and tell this to, to the people on my channel. How much do you squat? How, what's your world record squat? What's your world record deadlift with the injured shoulder? Since my shoulder has been injured, in training, I have squatted, and this is raw. This is just in a singlet, belt, and knee sleeve. I squatted 350 in training. Now that's 350 I kilos. I squatted 350 kilos. Uh, that's, I don't know, that's seven something, seven, I don't, I don't know, 770. So let's say seven, seven, eight, 780 pound squat. It's 770. 770. Seven, seven, 770 pound squat and so that's, that's, in, uh, that's 350 kilos I've, I've actually squatted 330 for a triple in training nice uh, in a meet <laughs> in a meet after my and this is in between my um, my last surgery and the surgery before that in between that I squatted the Norwegian national national record and I did this as a 39 year old man wow 335.5 kilos Wow. As a 49 year old man. National As a 49 year old man. Regardless of age. Uh, I'm very proud of that. You know, I don't care if anyone that's else awesome. by that. I like it. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Dead, deadlift with all of these shoulder injuries, I've gotten 325. But for the longest time now, since maybe after the fifth, yeah, after my fifth shoulder injury, I've not deadlifted over 280, 285. Mm. Uh, not because of strength issues, but because I'm just, it, 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 it hurts. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> I got you. Weight, bar, and, I, and the type of shoulder injuries and all the surgeries, it hurts. It feels like my arm is going to rip 
grip on him. It's not true. Aye. But um, eventually I'll get over 300 kilos on a, uh, on a, on a deadlift. Well, I'm sure you will. So, uh, yeah, again, I don't know what that is in pounds. Uh, <laughs> I, I live here in Norway, as in case people don't know. I'm not Norwegian. I'm an American. Right. I'm in Norway, so the whole mm. pounds and all that stuff, I don't, it's, it's out the window. So I think in kilos. Okay. So, um, Norwegian squat record, 335.5 kilos. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody can just check that out and see what that is. That's probably been my greatest powerlifting achievement ever, and I did it as a 49-year-old man yeah. with, at that point, six or seven shoulder surgery. She. So, uh, yeah, and I've seen, I've seen those. Uh, you showed me the, uh, the surgical uh, photos, and, and it's, it's pretty gnarly, man. And now, and now... <clears throat> Now, when I train my squat, I can only train a uh, safety squat, safety bar squat. I see. And, and um, I feel, well, it doesn't matter how I feel, I am stronger now, based upon the numbers I'm squatting in my training with safety bar squat, I'm stronger now than I was a year or two ago. I'm stronger now than I was when I squatted that 335 and a half for the Norwegian Raw. You think the... You think the uh... You think the recovery process with with not being in the gym has kind of revitalized your your uh, your drive and and your body? I you know I don't know what it is. Uh, I can't single out any one thing. I think it's a combination of <laughs> attitude. You know, I want to get better. I there you go. I can get better. There you go. There's the focus right there. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm just a good self motivator. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that one thing that motivates me, I, I joke about this all the time. Now, I've known Ed Cohen since uh, 1995 when I moved to the Chicago area, mm-hmm. and uh, he's been a, he's been a good friend all those years. Is uh, his lady Miss Hagen Nielsen? She's a Norwegian who moved to Chicago mm-hmm. uh, to be with, and I've known Hagen since yeah 96 or so, 96, okay. 97. So I have, I have a little contact with Ed through her. She's probably my best friend in the world. Um, and I was talking mess, chatting back and forth with Ed on, uh, on Messenger. And I can't remember exactly what the context was, but we were just messing with each other. And he messaged me back, yeah, well, when you squat 800 pounds, then we can talk. Oh. So 800 pounds is 363 kilos. Uh-huh. I will squat 363 kilos. Yeah, it's coming. You will, and 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 hopefully uh, they'll 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 uh, they'll have that back in the uh, they'll they'll let you do that in the Arnold. Well, you know, for the last two years in a row, I got invited to that new uh, squat competition that they have at the Arnold. That's an honor. Yeah. But I just haven't been able to do it because I just don't feel. Even though my squad is strong, even though I just set that Norwegian record, that's also an Ohio State record. Mm. Uh, maybe somebody has beat that as an Ohio mm. State record. Because even though I live in Norway, I am a U.S. citizen and I'm from Ohio, so any record in Ohio that I break, uh, it counts. Oh, nice. I have a, I have a, I have a push-pull <laughs> record. Nice. Um, I have a, a, a squad record. Yeah, certain things, certain records like that in Ohio. Um, so I, I, I have a very clear goal but I want to mm-hmm. squat 800 mostly because I think I can do it mostly because I know I can do it yeah, that starts with that I'm going to do it but also as a side thing and kind of as a joke because Ed teased me because I haven't squatted 800 yet so I have I, you know I love it when t- I love it when people tell me that I can't do something yeah I love it Look, and I'll, but, but just, to, just to clarify he said that as a joke he, yeah he, but even joking yeah yeah you, yeah. you screwed up now. That's right. That's right. Um, and you know what's interesting, man, is that I'm, on my own, without any training other than just watching YouTube videos and the little bit, the, I don't want to belittle it, and the training that I had received from the uh, the original, my original, my first uh, powerlifting coach, once it was time for, for chalk, to come into play, this commercial gym I was in, they, they weren't having it. And there was a lot of power okay. power struggle in there. And so I said, well, it's time for me to, to look on a, uh, on the internet and find a uh, find a, a powerlifting gym. So I found a powerlifting gym, and it was it instantly felt like home, and I was just going at it bro style, and, and taking from here, and taking from there, and taking from here. 
and I got myself to to pull on a uh, on a uh, uh, what do they call that? The it's not a, it's not a stiff bar, but um, for the deadlifts, it's got the whip to it. A Texas. a Texas bar, yeah. A Texas bar, which has got a skinnier diameter, and so it bends a little bit and gives you a little head start. Um, yeah. I pulled six hundred one on a Texas bar, and that was all under just me really going at it out of the pure love of of training. But after I pulled yeah. that six hundred one, I sat back and thought, I gotta train. Like, how hard do I have to train now to 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 get a seven hundred pound squat and or 700 pound deadlift, and I thought, I don't know if I can train much harder. So it was time for me to find smart training. And the training that you and I are doing, the volume is way less, but it's but the training is directed and and I and I'm recovering it. And plus, you know, I'm I'm what? I'm almost six years older, and yeah. my body won't take that sort of sort of beating anymore that I was originally giving it, you know, and so to reach a 700 pound deadlift, it's going to take proper programming. Sure, and I, I'm doing my best to give you that proper program, but I think that your, I mean, your numbers are a testament. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, to and your training, training, absolutely. You know, you're getting, you're getting the results, you know, I'm doing the programming, but you're doing the work. Right, so that's, and and that's what people, to you, my friend. that's what people, uh, it's, it's a, it's a shared honor, uh, coach, because because you're bringing the experience, you're giving me the work, and I'm doing it without complaining, and that's and that's the thing is that you can't complain when someone is is giving you their 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 best, then you appreciate it, and you go and you and you give it everything you got because that way you have real data to work with, you have real results, exactly, and that's what people don't get. They want everything done for them, and you yeah. and and you just. <sighs> How insulting would it be? Communication. Yeah. And again, the communication is vital. If you're going to use a coach, make sure it's somebody you can talk with. Absolutely. You don't want somebody who just sends you a program on email or right. and, and then they disappear. And that's and that's what my buddy that's what my buddy Nick was having a problem with. Is that yeah. he, he he would he would respond back to these online coaches and and they would just leave him hanging for two, three days, four days. Yeah. And yeah. And then they would tell them things that just there was unreadable, uh, unreadable feedback, and you're just like, man. I was like, Nick, you, I was like, Nick, you, you just need to stop spending money on these guys, and and, uh, and and I don't know what, but I wouldn't spend another dime on them, you know, because there's a lot of guys out there just taking your money and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They say, oh, I, I, yeah. I, I tell you, I, I've really been enjoying working with you. You know, you. Uh... Like I said, you're doing the work. I've never been so impressed with someone uh, in their in their physical trans transformation. It's only getting better. And, and I want to say I want to say too that, and it's very important that I say this in this video because I'm taking the channel in a, in a direction where people are beginning are just beginning to understand that I'm not a snake dieter anymore. I am a guy who, who, who knows how to snake diet just as well as Cole does. And I am a resource in that sense. And so you can always come to my channel and ask me questions. And, I, and unless I'm going to say something that's going to possibly get me in trouble legally, I, I, I tell people, look, I can't answer that. Right? I can't give you yeah. advice that might wind me up in court. Right, right. But what I need people to understand is that in order for me to hit these numbers that I've got coming up and go beyond, I've got to carry a little extra body fat on me, and uh, and and I've got to maintain a, a, a body weight. But what'll be interesting is that after I build more muscle for another year or two, if I want to um, say do do a fast or just even restrict calories, even the extra muscle that you build helps you lose weight at such a rapid rate. You know, if I were to do a three-day snake juice fast, I'd probably lose 25 pounds solely because of the muscle that I've gained. People have to understand that if you're, you have to pick one master to serve for a little while. There's a guy who I just answered the other day in a comment. He says, I want to train for four to six months and then snake diet and, and, 
and uh, get stronger and he's got this great lofty goals and I said okay think about sticking to a program for a year before you do any massive cutting your mindset is good but it's it's may, maybe needs to be directed into a more uh, workable format for you like that's not even really the right words but he wants to train for four to six months and then lose a bunch of weight and see what he did and you need two three years of training to to really have something like that blow your mind because you're not gonna your mind's not gonna be blown after four to six weeks as a natural lifting in the gym if if you are lifting as a natural lifter four to six I mean four to six months in the gym if you're lifting four to six months in the gym as a natural and you really like what you're doing you're not gonna want to change anything you're gonna want to just keep going exactly yeah. you, you gotta you know um, there, there's a YouTuber, I don't know what happened to him, but his name was Elliot Hulse, and, and he, I used to watch him, I used to watch him, because he seemed very transparent. Oh, yeah, and he, he's is he? He's got a, yeah, he's got a few hundred thousand, like, half a million oh, followers on his Yeah, he, he's an interesting guy. He's an interesting guy. Interesting page alone, like half a million yeah, he's an interesting guy. He, yeah. he, he said, uh, he said something that I picked up on, um, when I was first starting to power lift. And he said, um, you got to stick to a program for a year. You got to at least give it a year to see, to, to, to see if you, if you, if this direction you want to take your life in to see results, you got to give it a year solid. Don't just stick with your program. Don't quit your program. Don't change your program. Stay with it. People want everything so fast today. Yeah, yeah. But, People have to have a little patience. And yeah. They have to see the, the end goal. They have to play the long game. And you gotta and you gotta understand too that this powerlifting lends itself to old school eating, like steak, eggs, butter, <laughs> milk, yeah. cheese. Yeah. You have all the rich stuff. And 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 I found like for an easy gainer for me, someone who gains weight very easily, my big thing is I have to regulate carbohydrate. I have to time my carbs, but I can eat to like if I the amount of fat that I that I eat that I eat on a Friday like I had to I have had problems with this condo and it's stressed me out and I and I actually missed a day but I'm making up for it on my my mock meet today um and I'm much more well rested and less stress free so it's gonna be a great day of training today but today I'm taking in 6,000 calories and the majority of it is in the is in the steak that I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat a, a 2.3 pound uh, chuck steak, and uh, oh, man. right, I'll be right there. yeah, and and really, it's it's the majority of that. It's about 4,500 calories in steak, and then I'm going to eat sweet potatoes, which are going to take me up to maybe about uh, like maybe 5,400 calories. And then the butter that I'll use, and uh, and maybe before I go to bed I'll eat six eggs. That takes me to about six thousand calories, and they're clean calories. They're not going to make me fat. What they're going to do is when my when I'm asleep and my hormones are going crazy. Yeah, people have to understand that your endocrine system pulses these pulses. It's it's human growth hormone. It pulses all these chemicals in the dark, which is so amazing, right? And that and just, you know, these molecules are all electrically charged and they're binding with one another and they're doing all these wonderful things. And if you get that deep sleep and you eat that pure food, my girlfriend was looking at me the other day and she goes, God, you're, you're getting bigger. And I was like, what? You, I'm getting fatter? She goes, no, you're just like getting bigger. And I'm like, there you go. That's what you want to hear yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I do that sometimes, <laughs> you know? So thank you, man. Like, and I know that uh, upping the weight in the supplemental exercises is yeah. really providing me some some hardcore pumps, and it's driving that 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 material yeah. into my muscles. Yeah, and it fits to do that now because you have uh, such a long time until your next meet, which is August twenty second. Oh yeah. So it's going to be real exciting to see what this programming does for you now. But mm -hmm. but um, I, I I know. I, I have to. I have to say, I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I know my programming is good. I know I know what I'm doing. But you do. you're the one doing the work. You know, um, I wanted to say this. It's almost like, um, uh, it's almost like you challenge 
it's a non-verbal challenge to my capabilities as a coach. Oh. And it's like, okay, I thought that this program was going to be, you know, turned up to, to, to 10 for this guy. Well, you've turned it up. Turn it as if it's turned up to 8. So then it's a, so the, for the next block, I have to turn it up a little more. We're, we're operating right now. Let me tell you something while I got you here. We're operating right now at about 8.5 on the Richter scale, and the Richter scale is going to 10 because I'm experiencing a fatigue where I'm thinking about um, I need an extra day's rest to, like, uh, like I was almost thinking about taking today off as a day of rest before I hit this mock meet and then having only one day. Like, Friday would be the mock meet, and then I would rest a day, and then do the the third day, or I mean the second day. Explain to people what a mock meet is for those that don't know. Oh, okay. A mock meet is, is, a, is, a, is a powerlifting meet that you do as part of training. So in a powerlifting competition, you squat, bench, and deadlift. In your training, the same thing. in your training, you do squat, bench, and deadlift once a week, all on the same day. And and I and so if I've got 24 weeks until the next meet, I've got 24 mock meets under my belt so that I'm not nervous when I get to the meet. I know what to expect. I'm able to choose my attempts energy. better. I'm just a I'm not worried about energy loss. Not worried about energy loss. Uh, you know, all these issues can be can, are solved well well before the day of the meet. So all I have to do is pack my bag, show up, weigh in, and sit and start fueling. Whereas, like I saw one woman at the last meet. She looked like somebody, like there was, a mob was chasing her. She was so scared. And uh, and I was like, man, I, I almost wanted to say to the meat director, are you sure she should even be lifting today? Because look at her, she's going to poop herself. Because she was at the rules meeting and looking like literally, like you, you ever seen the movie The Shining? Absolutely, one of my favorite movies. You remember when the axe comes through the door? That look on her face, she was so scared. Ah! She looked like that at the rules meeting. I was like, oh, my God, why are you lying? Who is her coach? She looked, she looked at her coach's back pocket maybe had an axe. Death. She was death, deathly afraid. But at the end of the meet, after doing her first meet, she looked like it was old school. Now now imagine her on a, on a, uh, on, on a John Allen Reese program where once a week it's a mock meet. You go in and you pretend, I go in, like today I go in and I pretend I'm at the meet. I give myself the same amount of time in between squat, bench, and deadlift. That means I get 20 minutes between squatting and benching. I get 20 minutes in between benching and deadlifting. I sit back and I'll eat a little food, I'll drink a little uh, V8 for the salt water aspect, and I just relax and I jump in and pretend it's a mock meet. I take myself there. And, uh, and But then on the other two days, I speed the pace up a little bit, but on but on that one day a week when I do your mock meet, I treat it like it's a meet. I you know I don't rush through anything. I'm there. You know I hear the announcer saying you know the bar is loaded. I I see the people changing off the weights for me. I see myself in line behind the guy. You know everything. I I go into the like I imagine everything. Now this is the fun part of. Of being connected to your life because you, the more as a teacher they teach us about engagement as a teacher you have to be engaged in the in the process of being a teacher but you're also you have to you have to uh, have kids engaged right. and the principal has to be engaged everybody's got to be engaged for, for not for ego purposes but because there's there's a mission we're trying to get educated. We're trying to be better people. We're trying to be better. And, uh, and if you're not engaged, then your performance is not going to be optimal. So have fun with it. If you, if you train as a power lifter under, under Coach John's uh, uh, training, I guarantee you you're going to have a ball because it's gonna be, he's going to give you uh, uh, he's going to give you a blueprint that you guys will make into something unique. That will be exclusively yours. That will, that will, when you're out, when you leave the gym, the powerlifting in general gave me the confidence to tackle a full loaded school through the death of two parents 
and stay in shape and snake diet. If I can just throw this in there, I try to think of, I try to take my powerlifting and put it on the scale and in other words, the discipline and the things that I learn about myself, hmm. my powerlifting, yeah. I want to apply that to my day-to-day life when it comes to setting goals, right. when it comes to, to uh, making a vision a reality. Right. Excuse me. And uh, the, the, for me, at least, there's a definite crossover effect from powerlifting to my day-to-day life. And when I see people that I have contact with who are able to take and apply that to their life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, and, and you, you are the walking epitome. Oh, high praise, man. Thank you very much. And and how is somebody maybe sitting there who hasn't who has who might be wanting to do this, and they might be saying, "How can I, how can just lifting weights do that?" Well, you got to go in there. You got to try it on, man. Just go in there and and trust it. You know, uh, I always tell people on my channel, you don't have to be a power lifter, but you got to get physically fit. You got to find something that gets you out of bed in the morning that, that after all the bullshit of the day is done, you get to do this and it gets you physically fit. That's where you find the transformation. And one thing I wanted to say was if, if it weren't for the Navy SEAL videos, because I know you're a Marine, but if it wasn't for the Navy SEAL videos, none of this would have, on YouTube, none of this would have would have come into being because... At the time when I started watching Navy SEAL videos, I was looking for motivation to to come up the ladder in a kitchen that I was working in because I used to be a chef. And one of one of the people that I worked with way back in the day, who was just a low low plea blind cook like me, he was a Marine. Came back to the to the restaurant, which was a seven million dollar a year profit restaurant, which is a big thing. You don't trust somebody with 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 that kind of money if they're not on the ball. And he got the he landed the head chef job from from a master chef from Czechoslovakia. This guy was insane himself, and he wasn't going to give this job to anybody who wasn't com- completely committed. So my buddy Ryan Couch, who was a Marine, I, I I don't know any deeper than that, but I know he he graduated and he served. And when he got out, he came back to the restaurant with the goal to be the head chef. And doggone it, that devil dog got the job, right? Now, I can't, he called me because he needed some people. Just so happened I got fired from a job. And he calls me out of the blue. Says, hey, you need a job? Great. Fast forward. I'm kind of, I'm beginning to be a, a detriment to him because I'm balancing alcoholism and, and, uh, and the line cook job. And it was irritating him. And it, and it disappointed me in myself because... He called me out of the blue thinking that I was going to be a great member of his team and I was letting him down. And so I was still, I was still working close to 16, 17 hours a day as a 450 pound guy. So I had the stamina. I loved cooking enough, but I was screwing up in my life and it was affecting him. And so I said, well, how am I going to honor this guy? Cause, cause I really loved this guy. We had partied together back in the day and, and we had just had a great relationship, but now it's serious. And my reputation, too, is at stake. And so I started looking for YouTube videos on motivation, and I clicked on a Navy SEAL video. And those instructors, they were different. They were calm, and they were very matter-of-fact, and they had, like, this deep wisdom about this incredibly, horrifically scary job. And, And the training was just out of this world difficult. But it was when they would be talking to to a uh, to a, to somebody who wanted to get through buds and they would they never yelled they just told you know like they just told someone you know you're you're, you're you ain't going to make it or this is you know they would tell them very calmly as a matter of fact you're going to learn how to control your anger or else I don't want you here and I will make sure that you don't yeah. make it here and now get out of my face you know what I mean? And and you're just you just there's no joking around, but but with the way they talk to the to the to the recruits is in such a way that they bring out of the recruit something within himself to keep them in the training. Because they are there. 
they are there to make them fail. Yeah. So they are there to make them fail. They don't want you. That like they they've eliminated whole whole classes before. None of you guys have made the grade. Bye. But the only problem with what you're with what you're saying here is that uh, you know you got to graduate from watching Navy Seals and get to the Russian Marine Recon. <laughs> yeah, well, I watch all those guys too. I watch them all. I was taking everything. Okay. Yeah. I was watching. I would watch them all from from uh, from Rangers to to jump to to uh, to. I mean everything. I was. I start soaking up this mentality, and the mentality. I took it back to work, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to do everything I can possibly do for this chef. I'm going to become a man finally, and start working like a responsible individual." I cut all my ties with all the people who I used to party with. I just started going home sleeping and coming back well rested and and I was on time 20 minutes it was it was in midwinter uh, when I started making this change and so I would be there at, at five o'clock in the morning waiting outside the door bundled up in the freezing cold waiting for the chef to get there to show him that you'll never get there before me everything changed it was time to get a disciplined mindset and so that prepared me for the discipline of lifting weights, right? Okay. And 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 all these all these men out there who who are who you know because I'm not taking anything away from women, but you know, a man has to see a man being a man to understand how to be a man. That's true. That's very true. And so you see so you see people Right. Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, everybody, everybody is valuable when, when their heart's in the right place, and everybody is a national asset, and is and and must be and must be regarded as 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 priceless. The the woman who's helping me through my situation right now at my apartment, why she she is she is what a lot of guys don't are not able to deal with, which is a brutally strong personality from a woman. But guess what? She's she's going to bat for me. All these all these teachers that have been teaching me how to teach, not a single man in the bunch, right? So who am, who am I to look at the experts and say, well, just because you have a vagina, you don't know anything? I'm um, sorry, wake up call. I think a vagina is an asset. Personally. <laughs> hey, oh, a good a, a yeah. <laughs> Easy pill. No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, but you know, it's like. Uh, hey, let me tell you, man. You, you, my knife, my chef knife, I call the bitch. If you remember uh, from training day, where the shotgun, I, my knife has cut. My knife has, yeah, give me the bitch. My knife has cut everybody other than me besides my girlfriend who's used it. It's got 14 cuts. 14 different people. I let people use it. I say, it's cut people before. It doesn't doesn't really like you. You want to use it? And all these cooks would go, man, give me that fucking knife. And as sooner or later, I'd hear, ah! And I'd be like, I told you, the bitch got you. It's like, the bitch. The, yeah, the bitch. And, and kitchen utensils have, have a soul. Let me tell you that. They do. But anyway, um, so, hey, listen, listen, yeah. I, gotta, I have to uh, cut this short. Yeah. I need to crawl out of the studio here and check on the kids. Yeah. I have a, uh, a little self-imposed studio session. You know, over here in Norway, just about everything is shut down. In fact, everything is shut down. The schools are closed. The gyms are closed. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We're yeah. dealing with the same yeah. thing over here. Hospitals and, hospitals and stores are open, but I'm going to use this time for profitable things. <laughs> there you go. This, this there you go. Episode with you. If you look behind me here in the studio. Ah, I see. Very nice. Beautiful. Oh gosh, why did I Beautiful. Set up my camera again. But um, can you tell people where they can reach you on social media? Um, primarily, I'm thinking about your YouTube channel because, man, it's just uh, I am motivational. People can start at the beginning and watch your videos one at a time, so that they're they, they can follow your journey from when you first started to where you are now. How do they find you on social media? Snake Diet Barbell. Time to train. That's my YouTube. That's my that's my uh, that's my YouTube name. Okay. 
Um, on Instagram, uh, I am Snake Diet Larry. Snake Diet Larry. Okay. Yep. And um, okay. and I really don't use Facebook that much, even though I'm, I you know uh, I should probably reopen that, but I have to do things um, totally calculating now because I, I'm thinking I'm I, uh, I think I'm just gonna go under my own power in life because uh, I've got some resource I've got good resources and and uh, I've really I've been building up. Um, my own credentials that I think are, are marketable. Yeah, and and that's and that's the thing is that Instagram and YouTube they are vehicles for you to drive a business. Well, They're, that's why I started my that's why I started my YouTube channel. I, mean, I had an old YouTube channel. Right. That wasn't set up. Right. For anything worthwhile. Right. Documentation, my training videos right. at the time. Actually, people just need to forget about that. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, wait. I, I, I was no. thinking you were going to say that. I would take. Okay, let's hear it. I would take. Find a way. Talk to your talk to your best tech person, and have those videos on your old channel brought over to your new channel, and then e eliminate that channel. But what you have there, somebody out there, because it's global, six billion people. Somebody out there. You have to figure out how to do that. That you have to. You cannot. That is not trash. That is not garbage. That is that is something. That is gold for somebody that might save somebody's life. That that is that. You got to see. That's interesting to hear. You know what? Maybe I'll do that. I'll take care of those videos and get them onto my new channel somehow. But uh, my new channel, I just started that a couple of three weeks ago. And it has my uh, podcast episodes, the Coming Home Podcast with John Allen. That's right. You can find that podcast on, um, yeah, anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's it. Uh, the most direct place to go to get that podcast mm -hmm. is at John Allen, that's J O H N A L A N dot podbean, that's P O D B E A N dot com. Okay, so do me a favor. Uh, do me a favor because when I go back over the video, I want to be able to go right to the end here at the one hour and twenty eight minute mark, and I want to be able to listen to to you give me all the information so I can put it in in okay. the uh, in the in the uh, in the information section of a video with links so people can click on it and they can get right to you. So okay. go ahead. I can send you all that. I can send you all that information uh, later. Then I can do that. Okay. Okay. But but tell but tell me that information. Tell me that information too, so that people, if they're listening, they can they can go right there right away. Go ahead. On YouTube, you can go to uh, John Allen. That's J O H N A L A N. John Allen. Simple, straightforward. That's me on YouTube. On Twitter, uh, John Allen Pod. That would be at J O H N A L A N P O. -N. Uh, to find my podcast, it's on my YouTube channel, but you can also go into johnallenpod.podbean.com. That's J-O-H-N-A-L-A-N dot, uh, I'm sorry, J-O-H-N-A-L-A-N-P-O-D dot podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com. On Facebook, you can go to at John Allen Loyal Oak. That's J O H N A L A N L O Y A L O A K. At John Allen Loyal Oak. It's also the same call sign for my Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry for my um, for my Instagram. I have two Instagram pages. My artist page is at John Allen Loyal Oak. My powerlifting page on Instagram is at John Allen Reese R E. That's what I'm saying. Be that's what I'm saying. Right, because because people will listen to this when they're driving. Yeah. And they'll tell someone, yeah. "Oh, go here," and they'll hand them their phone. They'll say, "Plug this in for me and just save it or something." They'll, you're right. Yeah. So we never miss an opportunity to to promote ourselves. And listening to all the listening to all the ways you're promoting yourself tells me I need to get on the ball and get some more social media. I just started a dialogue with someone who is a web designer. I need a website so I can consolidate all, all of this. Yes. I think for your, for your viewers, the best way for them to contact me if they're interested in training and programming for, for powerlifting or for any kind of training they want to do, if they send me an email, and they can do that, 
at um, johnallenpod.gmail. I'm sorry, johnallenpod at gmail.com. Okay, and on Messenger. A L A M P O D at gmail.com. Johnallenpod at gmail.com. And on Messenger or in or on on our phones. Take the time out and send me all of this information again so I can put it in my YouTube channel because um, because I'm going to post this, but I'm also going to record a little bit more and um, yeah. and tell people yeah. about your channel and put and post at the bottom of the video. Um, uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but yeah. but 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 in the but in the information uh, section, like in the comments or not in the comments, but you know how when when a video comes up and then they have the information about the video in that little section, that's where I put everything. And and, and as a YouTube creator, that's that's a live section. You can always change that and modify it as you go along. So right off the bat, I put the video up so they can hear your voice and they can and and I can put the basics there about you. And then as time goes on, you send me uh, the information on you know, messenger, like all the, like all your social media handles, then I'll go back and, and I'll, and I'll readjust and resave it. And YouTube automatically just, just corrects everything and doesn't miss a beat. Sure. Right. Sure. So do that for me. And, um, and, and I'm going to take a, a page out of your playbook and start getting uh, some more social media for me, but I've got to really sit and think about how I want to, how I want to, uh, redo this because yeah. It doesn't hurt to have, of these different social media right. platforms as I've found that. That's right. Because, if, you know, if we don't promote ourselves, who's going to do it? That's right. You know? If you're not your own advocate, you know, I, and I'm... I, I, don't have, I, don't have, I don't have those connections in, in Hollywood and in the media branch, so i got to do it myself. That's, that's right. That's it. right. People, and what I do see I need to do is I need to consolidate all of this into one place, and that is a website. And let me tell you, well. I'm learning right now with this condo that I'm in, nobody's going to bat for me except myself. I've got some good people out there helping me out, but but the only reason they're driving for me is because I brought the the issues to their attention. You've got to be your own best advocate. You've got to stay connected to your own life, right? You've definitely got the fortitude, the strength to, to, to handle whatever comes your way, my brother. Oh, I'm getting it done. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we talk all the time, you and I, but this is the first formal talk that we are actually sharing with our respective uh, mm -hmm. audiences. So, thank and, you so much for that, Larry. And maybe next time I can explain to you how all these graphs work. I graphed all my progress for a year on the snake hey, diet. Hey, <laughs> you know what? We're not done, man. We're going to do it again. Definitely, yeah. I think um, I think one hand's going to wash the other here, and, and th we got something good going. Absolutely. Absolutely. God bless you, man. God bless God you bless too, you. brother. Take care of yourself, man. Thank you, you Coach. Pleasure. I'll be in contact with uh, today's training and with this video, which is coming out. I'm going to upload it as, as soon as we're done. I'm looking forward to checking it out, man. Outstanding. Okay, love you. All right, love you too, man. Talk to you soon. Yeah, bye. All right, yep, bye-bye.